I scuba dove in over 43 places and kept seeing the same problem over and over again. And there's gotta be a way where I can help out. So I'm going to Egypt to save the Red Sea Coral Reef and I thought of five possible prototypes where if I use my head, maybe I can make a difference. Now the problem that I keep swimming into when I'm exploring some reef is that there's not really much reef at all anymore. And we all know from Finding Nemo that about 25% of fish and marine species make their homes in these coral reefs. Please don't go away. Please. But remember when I said I thought of five possible prototypes? And I thought of five possible prototypes where if I use my head, that's it. Use my head. What if the best possible home for all the Dories and Nemos is my head? So we have two requirements to help out the coral reef. One, does it sink? And two, does it use my head? So I'm going to take a bunch of pictures of my head and stitch them together in a 3D model, which is also known as photogrammetry. Now that I've got this file with as much detail and color as possible, I can then use this to make physical molds out of a bunch of different materials. So first we're going to this massive color 3D printer. Now this machine isn't like all the other hobbyist printers out there because it uses a special kind of powder that bonds ink and a binding agent that turns into colored plaster. The print head goes over multiple layers, and when it's done, we're left with our part underneath all of the unused plaster powder layers. I then have to carefully vacuum up all of the excess without damaging the part because it's extremely brittle at this stage. So now that we have the colored plaster part depowdered, we have to cover the entire thing in a bath of super glue. This will strengthen it and really help the colors pop. During Christmas time, I made these with mistletoe coming out the bottom so people could kiss underneath the mistle joe. Kind of weird, I know, but it's fun. And when looking at the requirements, this does use my head, but it probably is not great for the ocean with all of the glue and ink and plaster. So let's move on to a more popular prototyping method with 3D printing that is called fused deposition modeling. Now we can only use one type of color with this type of printing but the fish in the coral probably don't care. I'll take my head and print it in polylactic acid, which according to this Aussie website is environmentally friendly. Good on you, mate. Okay, so when we finally have a physical model of our head and I used the organic supports on here and it looks really cool. It looks like I'm like snorting out something or like vomiting up this yellow tree trunk or something like that, along with my ears having these really long tubes but we just clean this off. The reason why the snot stuff is coming out of my nose is because of the new organic support structure from Prusa, which cleans up really easily, especially when I'm flexing all of the unnecessary special tools that I have. So let's see if this is gonna be the answer to the reef. And it floats. Now that's probably because of all of the infill that is created, it creates these air pockets inside of it. And on further investigation, it seems that PLA probably isn't the best material for our oceans. So it's back to the drawing board with prototype number three, a material that 70% of women in LA are probably very familiar with, silicone. This time I'm gonna print the subtractive section of a head and then fill the negative space with a two-part silicone mixture. And after letting it cure overnight, I then had a surprisingly accurate model. Now you have to be aware of air bubbles getting trapped in certain areas, but overall it turned out way better than I expected. And now, the real test. It sinks. <laughs> I'm actually surprised by this. Okay, we got my head, now let's go to Egypt. Whoa, hold on, future Joe. Now, does this sink? Yes. But did it use my head? Technically, no. These are a bunch of pictures from old housemate Hugh's head. You see, I took a bunch of pictures of him so that when he moved away, I could turn him into a robot. So for prototype number four, we're gonna bring out the big guns. Aluminium. Aluminum. I, I lived in London for eight years. I'm sorry, I don't know what it is anymore. What I do know is that we can take half of my 3D head and pound it in casting sand to get a subtractive mold to pour some molten aluminium inside the sand trap. After pounding it down, I then put in a pipe to make a hole for where I'm going to pour the metal. I then flip it over and do the same part to the other half of the heads, making sure to add a layer of talcum powder in between the two halves. You can also see that I'm also making housemate Hugh's head right next to mine. After a little cleanup, I then lift off the bottom half and then remove all of the 3D printed parts. This has made a subtractive mold in the sand, but we need to do a little more work to make sure that the molten metal can pour into the heads just the way we want to. 
I left certain areas to be used as sacrificial spheres because when the metal cools, it will shrink and pull from more molten areas. Next, it's off to the furnace to heat up some aluminum. And then comes the tricky part. Now with all the metal poured and somewhat cool, I'm able to knock off all the sand and see what we've got. It looks kind of strange with all these long bars where we poured, these are called sprues, but with a little cleanup it should turn out great. And since I truly care about shop safety, I'll show you what not to do when some of my friends tried to make their mold. Uh, so make sure you're not too hung over the day you need stable hands to pour molten metal. But after some cleanup, we now have my head. So does it sink? Boom. No surprise there. Does it use my head? Well, yeah, kinda. Perfect, let's go to Egypt. Wait, yes, it does use my head, but if little Nemo is gonna try to hide from some predator, there's nowhere to go in. So... I don't think hollowing out metal is in my forte. It's really hard to do. So let's change it up to one last final material for our fifth and final prototype, and that is ceramics. But I'm not good at throwing things on a wheel, and I want to make a repeatable mold that can capture all the detail on my face, so we're going to use slip casting. Now, if you're not familiar with this method, we take plaster and create the negative mold of what we want. And before I mixed this up, I used the PLA 3D heads in plywood boxes, which I added a layer of soft soap to, so when the plaster dried, it was able to be demolded. This is why you need to scan your head. You can make so many cool things with it. And even better, you should take pictures of other people's heads without them knowing all the weird stuff that you can make with it. Like me convincing housemate Hugh that I needed to take pictures of his entire head for a school project, but now we can just make large plaster molds against his will. This massive print and mold turned out really well, and you can usually get around 100 pores of slip until the plaster becomes unusable. I'm doing two different molds here, one of my head and another larger one of Housemate Hugh's head. After letting the plaster air dry for about a week, we can pour in the slip, which in this case is a liquid terracotta clay, but stoneware and porcelain also work, and we just let it soak up in the mold. The plaster pulls out the water from in the clay, and it takes the detailed mold from the plaster. The thickness of your shell depends on how long you leave the slip in the mold before pouring it out. I usually leave them around 30 to 45 minutes to get a strong thickness of 6 millimeters or a quarter of an inch. After pouring it out, I then let it rest for a couple hours so that it is somewhat flexible before separating the plaster. And voila! We've got this piece of clay with our molded heads! Now this one I did in stoneware, so when it's fired it comes out white, and the other two I did in a red terracotta. The draft angles of each mold are important, and you can see the seam where the two plaster parts connect, but when it's at this soft stage, it's really easy to pull out, and then you can just clean it up the edges with a knife. I also use sandpaper in my fingers to blend everything together. And here are just some examples of different outcomes. I was playing around with some different paints and glazes just to give Nemo some different house options. And after firing them, they should now stand up to the salty seas. And... They sink! And they use my head! Okay, can we finally go now? Yes, let's go to Egypt and see if this can save the coral reef. And boom, no time for an airplane montage, we are in Egypt! And we aren't bothering with the Nile River, but instead the Red Sea side of Sharm el Sheikh and Dahab, where there's plenty of timeless architecture, delicious food, which I have a major tip about at the end of this video. And of course, sketchy construction practices right in the middle of a pedestrian sidewalk. Well, I guess this is all part of the adventure. But yes, back to the Aladdin cave shops with all sorts of stuff from the mummy and about a hundred diving shops all next to each other. 
You can take a ride with camels, but we've got plenty of heavy scuba tanks, so we're going to be driving to a popular spot called the cave. Our guide is an awesome dude named Hell, and he really knows his stuff. He was a stockbroker, but gave it all up after his first dive over 10 years ago, and is one of the best divers in Egypt. After hiking a bit, we got to the entry point, and if you're a little claustrophobic, you might not like this next part, because space is about to get really tight. You see, we have to sink straight down into this tiny gap, and making sure your tank doesn't hit the edge of the rocks is a little bit of a challenge. But once we were through, it was worth it. There were tons of houseless fish everywhere, but I wanted to see what type of real estate market there was in this neighborhood before I just gave my ceramic head to any old marine animal. And this is the head that I'm using for this reef with a nice thin hollow shell. So we went to a new spot and saw this deep trench down in the middle of it. And of course we went all the way down to the bottom to survey the entire housing market. My buddy Dom came along with us and here's a random side question that most people don't really think about, but have you ever seen your own air from the past? Now what I mean by this is, when we were breathing under the reef, our exhaled air bubbles were getting trapped under all of the rocks. And when we got back up to the top shelf of the reef, there was an entire air bubble curtain wall created from all of the old air going up to the surface. So I thought this was probably one of the best spots to place a Joe ceramic head home that would easily ocean rise in value, barring some aquatic housing price meltdown. Then I had one last head. This was made with a dark clay and grog, a very rare and exotic home. And this is where we left the entire crew because Hell said he had one special place, but he swore Dom and I to an Egyptian tomb if we said anything about where it was. So after driving in the back of this truck and paying off some border patrol guards, we landed at this remote place with only some Bedouins making tea. Bedouino, Bedouin, Bedouin, ah, Bedouin tea. Samoa. Mmm. Samoa. 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 Water. Yeah. Water. The Bedouins said it would help with my nighttime activities, but I'm not about to get distracted by herbal remedies when we have an entire fish housing industry in the palm of my hands. Does it work on your lips for? kissing girls. <laughs> Thank you. So let's get in the sea and find the final spot for Dory to plant some roots. But right off the bat, it didn't seem right. After swimming around, there were only a couple of patchy areas and nothing was really grabbing our attention. So rather than try and force it, Hell had the idea for one final spot. So we said goodbye to our Bedouin tea sellers and went even further into the unknown. Now this is the exact same area where Moses and the Israelites wandered for like 40 years, so searching around for a home in this neck of the woods is a pretty common theme throughout history. And since we spent so much time and energy creating this home for our fishy friends, I was getting kind of nervous that we weren't going to find the ideal spot for my head. Plus, there's only three minutes left in this video, and we all want to leave on an uplifting finale, so everything mattered on this final spot. But there it was. Just beyond this rock mound was the most perfect reef that needed a prefab built ceramic home if I ever saw one. Safe neighborhood, plenty of parks, and good schools for schools of fish that want to pursue higher education. Hell had found the exact spot we were looking for. So I let it go on a sandy area that needed some development, which was all approved by the Homeowners Association zoning licenses. After it landed beautifully on the floor, everything seemed to be lining up just right, because back at the rock mound, all of a sudden, real litter fish were coming from everywhere to take a look at the new builds on this hot property market. There was an entire school of glass fish that completely surrounded me. And when you're scuba diving and feeling weightless, it is truly magical.
would quit my job and work here. <laughs> oh. And as the sun was setting on this ancient land, we packed up, leaving our memories and fish houses in the past and just trying to take in every moment, whether we live above or below water, to be thankful that we can all call this place our home. Now, did this save the entire reef? Probably not. But at least Nemo now has a home that's rent-free, and it probably increased the value of the coral reef property patch. If you like this, then I've got another video about turning my friend into a merman with the ProJet 3D color printer right here. Oh, and if you're ever traveling to Egypt and you get horribly sick with food poisoning on the last day, you can get this stuff for the plane ride back, which is called Stopperia. And it really helps tighten up a loose situation, if you know what I mean.